My name is Eliel Karguli. I'm a postdoctoral fellow at the NASA Jet Propulsion Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you a little diagram trick that made circuits click for me. And I remember sitting in my junior year class, I was taking microelectronics, and I looked at a circuit drawn vertically like this, and something in my head just clicked. I was like, wow, that's actually how circuits work. And it turns out I had a lot of misconceptions, and then when I went and I asked my friends, they had a lot of misconceptions about circuits as well. It turns out that V equals IR. Um, in of itself was kind of a very misleading formula or at least written in a very misleading way. So in this video I'm going to just show you what this means, why this is a bit weird and why this is a much better way from a physics perspective, a little bit more intuitive. So before we talk about why this equation, um, the, the circuit drawn vertically makes more sense than here, before I explain to you why and, you're, and you'll have that aha moment, let's first talk about V equals IR. This is an equation that a lot of engineering students, especially in electrical engineering, they just kind of take and they just kind of memorized like yeah v equals ir like voltage equals current times resistance like the and people just kind of memorize that and then they like if you want to calculate the voltage um you need to figure out the current and the resistance you want to calculate resistance it's it's all it's usually drawn in a very misleading way as some kind of triangle where it's like i don't know it's like this it's like v and then like i r or something like that where it's like you only need two and if you there's three of them and you only need two you can find out a third one it's the stupidest way like it can ever be explained because it takes away from the whole meaning and this the same issue that we have over here in circuits is that circuits are kind of drawn as a loop and you're kind of i don't know let's say this is like 5k ohms you're kind of taught that this is like i don't know nine volts and this is like 5k ohms and then there's like current and then like you could hide the current and you could hide the resistance and then if you could add the current then you can actually calculate what that is. And again, it's kind of treated as a trivial like plug and chug mathematical formula, but this is all very, very stupid. And the reason this is a much better way to think of this circuit over here is because this is actually drawing exactly what's happening from, from a physics perspective. So if we were to think of V equals IR, um, and again, we, we, we take this equal sign as like cause and effect. Like if we were to treat the right side as a cause and the left side as an effect, Meaning, whatever we put on the right side causes the things that are on the left side. Then the equation actually changes. It becomes I equals V over R. And what that means is basically, if you want to have an effect, which is current, if you want current to pass through the circuit, then you need a voltage and you need a resistance. And what I love about this vertical drawing of the circuit is that's exactly what it entails. It shows you what's actually going on from a physics perspective. For example, here we have nine volts. And this nine volts sitting on top is already very telling. That tells you that there's an electric pressure uh, that is like some, some type of electric potential, something that's sitting and causing some charges to even want to drop in the form of currents. And there's some type of resistance. Let's say again, this is like 5k ohms. That's preventing that from happening. So there's current that is that like wants to drop. It wants to go down the circuit. Just like how if I had a ball that's like, like, like let's say there's a person with an arm holding this like humongous ball with whole, both of his arms. But like, let's say he's sitting on top of a roof or something of that nature, and, and the balls are like resting, and he wants to drop that all the way to the ground, let's say like the ground's over here. The, the, same, the same physics applies here in that just like how there's an electric potential energy, here there's a gravitational potential energy, and you want to drop the ball, and if there's like something underneath you that's stopping it, that's kind of like resistance. Same thing over here, if I'm trying to add a resistor, all I'm doing is I'm basically, I'm slowing down the drop of that current or the release of that electrical energy, and hence, the way I can calculate current, I can think of current as basically like uh, the energy, like going down, down, downstream. If I want to have more energy, I can do two things. I can either increase the potential, meaning I can increase like the height of this thing, or I could basically reduce the resistance, meaning I could um, make, 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 make this path like have a little uh, less friction, right? So um, again, this current is basically voltage over resistance, and if we were to just go ahead and start solving for the equation this way, then it's pretty intuitive and pretty easy what needs to happen. We're basically trying to take the electric potential and we're trying to convert that potential energy into mechanical energy. How does that happen? That gets happened through current actually passing through the wire. And the only thing getting in the way of that or slowing it down um, is the resistor over here. Now this is something that's pretty interesting because up until like sophomore year, when you're taking a class like circuit analysis, um, then you can have like, even more intense circuit problems. Like you'll have a battery that's drawn. It's supposed to be negative. And then you're like, okay, this is like, again, nine volts. And then you're gonna have interesting problems like this, where like you have a resistor here, and then a resistor here, and then like a resistor, and then a resistor, 
And then let's say like there's another resistor here. And then like all of these guys, let's say, go down here. And then there's a the resistor here. And then there's like another one going diagonally, like over here. And it's like R, 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 R. And basically, this confuses. And then obviously, this all connects back down. This actually confuses the hell out of a lot of students, right? Because now you have to do like series analysis or like parallel analysis or like you don't know which ones like you want to begin with or like you don't really know which ones you, you want to go with. And then you're like, yeah, I'm going to start here. So all of the current is going through this resistor. But then like, I don't know, they start splitting. But then this one has like a lot of resistors. This one only has one. So how much goes here and how much goes over there? And, and it starts being confusing. And then here's where students start pulling out formulas and things that they memorize on like, oh yeah, in the case of like parallel to series, like you do this thing first, you do this thing first, like all sorts of intuition is lost. And that's because we're kind of going horizontally. Now imagine if we flip this thing like upside down and we were going vertically and we just had this thing connect to a ground or like in this case from over here, have this thing connect to a ground, then it becomes a lot more intuitive sense. Like let's say we have, we have the same nine volts over here. And then if we were to draw that, going through this circuit. And then it, let's say, it splits into two paths where like one goes over here, and then one guy goes over here, and then it goes on to do all these crazy things. Then I just know intuitively that all that current first has to go through this, this guy. And then based on these two paths that all, both of them eventually lead to the same ground, I can calculate what is the total equivalent resistance in here. And then I can basically just immediately have an intuition of, OK, wherever there's going to be a stronger equivalent resistance, less current is going to go through. And wherever there is less resistance, more is going to immediately go through the ground. For example, if this resistor right here was very weak and, and all these guys were a lot stronger, all of the current is just going to go through here. And we're just going to bypass the rest of that circuit. And it's something that really breaks my heart because a lot of engineering students don't think of circuits this intuitively. They think of it as like this complicated thing where like you have to pull out equations and do math and whatnot and doing things of that nature. So anyway, if you're ever going through like a circuit that you don't fully understand, try to simply like draw it vertically. And wherever you see something connecting back here to the negative or back to the battery, just think of it as something that's connecting to the ground and draw it in this vert vertical configuration. And then once you're able to do that, then just have an intuition of like, if there's a lot of resistance, um, assuming the voltage is fixed, wherever there's a lot of resistance, there's gonna be less current because current is the effect and voltage um, is the cause, and resistance is something that's slowing down the cause. So yeah, that being said, I hope you found this helpful, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace, love.